In this video, I want to take a look at all of the different options you have to use when taking notes or completing homework in a math class. So what I'm going to take a look at is I'm going to take a look at a composition book, an iPad, a piece of just normal spiral paper, loose leaf, a pocket notebook, a spiral, printer paper, and a post-it note. I once went through an entire class only taking notes on post-it notes. I'm just kidding. I'm not, I didn't do that, but I'm going to remove that. Uh, but here we go. First, I'm going to look at the pocket notebook. So if you are a fan of pocket notebooks, you know exactly what field notes are. But these are just four by six little pocket notebooks. So I have a pocket notebook here, field notes. Then I actually have an Amazon pocket notebook. These are really, really cheap on Amazon. Like the field notes, a little bit expensive. You can get like a pack of three of them from 12 to $15, but you can get like a pack of eight of these for like $8, like they're a dollar pocket notebook. But these are good for just having with you to just write things down. So I wouldn't necessarily say they're good to bring to a classroom and take notes in because they are pretty small. So here's what it looks like instead of field notes. Um, I haven't used that one yet. I do have another field notes that I have used, but here's what it um, might look like in a pocket notebook. So I do do some math in these, but like I said, the space is kind of small. Like they're just good to have with you in your back pocket and just write some things down. Or if you're a teacher, especially, it's good to have them to, if you're planning a lesson, I use my pocket notebook a lot to plan lessons, like just write down some problems that I want to do or like homework that I want to do, or if I'm trying to plan like an exam or something, uh, what sections I want the exam to cover. So that's, what's really good about a pocket notebook, but I don't think they're good note taking tools or homework tools um, because there's not a lot of room. So you're going to be going through dozens of pocket notebooks a class, but they are good to just have and write down some extra things. And I use it more as like a task manager and to-do lists and just kind of keep track of everything and write down some extra notes. But I've been using pocket notebooks since 2019 and I don't intend to stop. I really love my pocket notebook, but in terms of a note-taking or homework tool for math, I would not suggest it, but I would suggest having one just to have and uh, just write some things down. So that's a pocket notebook. Pros are small, carry it with you and take it everywhere like I, I always have it on me like I've gone through at least six or seven of these in the four or five years that I've been carrying a pocket notebook um, cons again just the size you can't really do a whole lot so <clears throat> that's my opinion on pocket notebooks next I want to take a look at spiral so spiral <clears throat> everyone should hopefully have experience with the spiral before so spirals are good in the sense of you just you just have a lot of room, you have some structure, you have lines, so that's good. <clears throat> um, the cons to a spiral, if you're like me, I'm left-handed, so whenever I try to take notes, I'm running into the spiral a lot, so that's kind of annoying. Second major con is you're only limited to a number of pages, and these are 90 pages. Uh, they're super cheap, so that's a pro. They're super cheap, you can get a spiral for like 40 cents, 50 cents, um, and that's for 90 sheets. But the thing I don't like about spirals when I'm doing math is I run out of room. Like I'll run out of room in this notebook and then I got to get another notebook. And then it's like, well, now I'm carrying two spirals for one class. And that's kind of annoying. And it's, it's really a weird complaint, but that just bothers me when I max out a spiral. And then, yeah, you could buy a massive spiral, but then you're carrying around like almost like a three ring binder of spiral notebook paper. And I don't know, that's just not for me. I use the spiral pretty much through all of my undergrad only because I didn't know any different. So I use the spiral a lot. When I started teaching, I use the spiral to keep track of all of my homework solutions for any homework that I assign. Uh, but uh, we'll come back to that. So that's a spiral. Next, I want to take a look at the composition book. So closely related to a spiral, but what you'll notice is it doesn't have the, the metal loops here. It doesn't have the metal loops. It just has flat which I just recently started using these. I just started using it last summer was the first time. So this past school year was the first time I used them exclusively. And I'm really glad I converted. I keep hitting the camera there. I re I'm really glad I converted to composition books. I, I really am. I'm 
kind of upset that I spent a lot of time putting things into spirals and all my notes into spirals because I really like these. I like the transportability of them. Like it's flat. I could stack others on top. I could stack books. With a spiral, you can't really do that. They always have this issue. And then when you put it in like a backpack, it starts to catch on things. That got really annoying. So I'm really glad I just took a game. You, know, you only live once, you know? Like, so you just got to live crazy. And that's what I said. I said, you know what? I'm going to go with composition book. And I'm really glad I did. So some pros. I like how it doesn't have the spiral part of it. Flat. Um, <clears throat> one con, though, is like you can't fold it over like you could a spiral how you could like flip it over can't do that with a composition book but being a left-handed i don't have any sort of issues writing up against here so that's always good so that's a composition book so closely related to the composition book i have seen people just take notes or do homework on just pieces of paper like this just a loose leaf piece of paper which is fine i never did that i always had a stack of these papers just in my office for anyone coming in and they just need some help on homework, I'll just grab a piece of paper like this and then that way they could take it with them. But as far as note taking or homework, I never really took on to just doing it on a single piece of loose leaf paper. I don't know why. Uh, I know once you're done, you could put it into like a binder with the three ring binder. That's cool. But I, similar to the next one that I'm gonna talk about, I just don't like having to deal with just a bunch of paper laying around. So this was not something that I did, but closely related. So now what we're talking about just single pieces of paper. Here is a piece of just normal printer paper. This, for some reason, when I was in grad school, I decided that I was going to do all of my work purely on printer paper. No clue why I did that, but I did. So by the end, I had like a huge stack of just pieces of computer paper filled with math. I have it in my crawl space somewhere. Haven't found, I haven't gone back there to check. But I know I have just a giant stack of computer paper with math written all over it. I, I've never did math on a piece of computer paper in my life. Up in, For some reason, when I started grad school, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do all my math on this. And I did. Um, so it's good because you're not limited to anything. Like on a piece of notebook paper like this, like you, you, you have the lines and you kind of want to naturally stay within this boundary. Like, I, I don't know, it's kind of weird writing on this side of the boundary, but yeah, it's, it's your piece of paper. You can do whatever you want. But here, you have no limitations. You can do anything you want. If you're like me, you have terrible handwriting, so this is good because I could just write all over the place. So I did take this, took an entire grad program on piece on printer paper, and then once I was done, I never did math on a piece of printer paper again. I don't know what came over me. Uh, so pros, you're not limited to anything. Cons, same thing as with the notebook paper. You're, what are you going to do? What, what are you going to do with that? It's hard to keep track of when you take notes and then you do homework on another piece of paper and then you got to make sure you have that paper together at all times. And then what do you do in the end? Do you put it into a binder or a giant folder? Do you put it into sleeve protectors? Do you three-hole punch it all? That's a whole another story of what do I do with all of this paper when I'm done. Um, so now let's talk about the iPad. So the iPad I'm very new to, and you'll have to excuse, I don't have a screen protector on it. I just got a, an iPad recently within the last couple months. Tons and tons of pros. Love the iPad. Uh, I, there's... You can organize it all, and you could have your entire college career in this single iPad. I use GoodNotes if you're wondering what program I downloaded. I'm going with GoodNotes. I love it. I use it daily, all the time, doing so much with it. And if I was a student, I would love to use GoodNotes just from the start. So tons of pros. You have everything all in one spot. The Apple Pencil is awesome. When I got the iPad, I used I bought it purely for the intention of like creating teaching contents, creating videos or lessons, exams, note sheets, all that stuff. I didn't think I would want to do math as a hobby on it because I do, if you've seen my videos before, I have a math bookshelf behind me and I do sit down and do some math just as like a hobby. I'm a teacher and a hobbyist of doing math and I didn't think I'd want to actually do math in my iPad. Now I'm almost saying... I don't know if I want to do math anywhere else because I like having it all organized. I like keeping folders of, uh, I want to do this book. I'm going to do it all in this document. And then I have another folder with another book and it's a solid. I, I like that organization of it. And um, same thing, you can do 
printer paper style paper. You can do notebook style paper. You have all this freedom of what kind of paper you want to write on. And I didn't know if I'd like the feeling of writing on it with the pen, but I do. I love it. Just like when I got a Kindle, I didn't think I'd like reading on a Kindle. I thought I liked the physical book, having a physical book in my hand. But when I got a Kindle, I'm like, I don't want to read physical books anymore because I can't lay down in bed in a dark room on my back reading a physical book. I can a Kindle. Same thing with the iPad. I can do all of my schoolwork on the couch, sitting back and only having a single iPad in my hand. So to recap, uh, pocket notebooks, really good to have just as a daily notebook with you to keep track of things exams homework make little notes um, if you're oh another thing with the pocket notebook that I liked if I'm working on homework or creating a lesson or creating an exam and there was a problem that I didn't know how to solve and I didn't want to use this paper that I was working on because like oh that now I'm just gonna have to scratch out that scratch work I use a pocket notebook like just write down the problem on a pocket notebook go through it that way so in that way you're not messing up the homework sheet that you're submitting or you're like just keeping it all organized if you're an organization or person uh, so just use a pocket notebook so pocket notebook good for every day printer paper good if you like the freedom and uh, not being restricted by anything spiral uh Definitely my least favorite option of just a using paper like this. Uh, second least favorite would be the spiral, this. Um, and then you have the composition book, which is great. So if I had to make a choice, if I'm starting college today and I had to make a choice, how am I going to take notes in my math classes. Like, what am I going to do? Am I going to buy an iPad? Am I going to get a composition book? Am I going to take notes on post-it notes? I'm just joking. Honestly, my choice would be go with the iPad. If that's not an option for you, and I, and I completely get it, I just recently bought an iPad, my first iPad ever. Um, <clears throat> and if that's not an option for you, I completely understand that. Then my second option would be just going with composition books. And I'm kind of upset that I spent so much time using normal spirals and not composition books. But iPad's my number one, and then composition books, and then always have pocket notebook on you. So I hope this helps, and good luck with your big decision you have to pick which type of paper you want to be writing on.